Welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. I'm Ashley Scather. You're watching one of our short episodes. There will not be a long episode this week because of the Thanksgiving holiday here in the States. But we will be back next week with three short episodes and one long episode just for your viewing pleasure. But until then, let's hit the headlines. We did it, everybody. We did it. Blue Origin finally landed a rocket after flying it into space. This is a huge deal for the commercial space industry as landing a rocket means reusable rockets, which also means much cheaper costs for sending supplies and if all goes to plan, people into space. There are some specifics here we should clarify and Elon Musk was also happy to talk about this this morning on his Twitter account. So Blue Origin's New Shepard rocket made it into space, but getting to geostationary transfer orbit or specifically getting a rocket into actual orbit above the Earth takes a lot more speed than the New Shepard was pulling. We're talking about Mach 3 to get to space, but Mach 30 for GTO orbit. And SpaceX has actually been working hard on the orbit side of things and reusing a rocket. So there's been a little bit more velocity happening in that process. It doesn't make this event with Blue Origin any less amazing though, and they should be commended for their hard work and successful landing. Blue Origin founder, who also happens to be the founder and CEO of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, tweeted for the first time this morning saying, quote, the rarest of beasts. A used rocket. Controlled landing not easy, but done right can look easy." Unquote. Oh snap, Bezos, are we under an umbrella? Because I sent some shade in that tweet. Oh my god, you guys, someone's trying to teach robots to disobey human commands. What? Well, before we all panic, let's, let's take a quick look. Tufts University's Human Robot Interaction Lab thinks it might be a good idea to teach robots to reject orders from humans when appropriate. So when exactly would it be appropriate for a robot to disobey the second law of robotics and say no to a human order? Well, it can't break the first law of robotics, which is injuring a human directly or allowing a human to be injured through an action. And the third law says a robot must protect itself as long as it doesn't break the first or second laws. The idea here is to actually teach a robot to understand what's being asked of them and to comprehend how capable it is of completing a task. In essence, Tufts University is actually teaching robots to explain to its human masters why they cannot complete a task so that the human can then modify, explain, or change the command to fall in line with the robot's obedience protocols. You know, I'm oddly okay with this as long as I never have to argue with my Roomba about whether or not it feels like vacuuming on a Saturday morning. Okay, our very last headline today is about a hospital that is doing a real life version of Surgeon Simulator. Boston Children's Hospital is a major advocate of practicing procedures before actually needing to perform them on real people. And because of that, they've partnered with an unlikely collaborator for surgery simulations. Fractured FX is a Hollywood makeup effects house, and they're now creating more realistic human organs and body parts for surgeons to practice on in simulators. Using a Hollywood effects house is kind of an unorthodox method, but if you think about it, it actually makes a lot of sense. Since the FX team can create highly realistic effects with anatomically correct look, feel, and response to human interaction, such as scalpel work. Each product is tested by actual surgeons, and then they give feedback to Fractured FX, which allows the company to create better and better products for simulations. So the next time you find yourself watching a show like The Nick and you feel grossed out at how realistic the surgical special effects are, keep in mind that real-life surgeons might be using those very same products to practice operating on what could be you in the future. That's creepy. All right, guys, let's check out what's new this week. Coming out this week, three movies in theaters that look to all be pretty good. So uh, Creed comes out this week. Creed is the story of Adonis Johnson, the son of Apollo Creed. So Rocky comes back, Sylvester Stallone, and he is now Adonis's mentor. So that should be really, really good. I'm hearing good things about that. Also coming out this week, The Good Dinosaur from Pixar, a story about a boy and his dog except that the boy is a dinosaur and the dog is a person. And I can't wait to see that. It looks really, really cute. And lastly, Victor Frankenstein, a kind of retelling of the story of Dr. Frankenstein uh, with Daniel Radcliffe playing Igor and James McAvoy playing Dr. Frankenstein. So uh, I, I can't wait to see that either. As for video games, there's not really anything compelling coming out this week, but 
who cares? You're already busy with Halo 5, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Fallout 4, Star Wars Battlefront, StarCraft 2, everything that's ever come out ever for video games. So uh, we're, we're all good there. We're all good. So let's check out our photographer of the day. Our photographer of the day today is Zakaria, who's sending this photo that they took with their iPhone 6S. Zakaria writes, hello, Tomorrow Daily. My name is Zakaria. I'm Omani from the Sultanate of Oman. I took this picture when I was running in the morning and I would like to share it with you. I used my iPhone 6S to take it and I added a chrome filter to it. Zakaria, this photo makes me want to go out and enjoy nature like I'm assuming you were doing when you took this picture. Thank you so much for sending it. And if you're out there and you want to submit your photography to the show, you can. It's tomorrow at CNET.com. It's super easy to email us. Give us permission to use your picture on the show. Send us your actual photo. And then tell us a little story about it, too, because we love stories. If you want to find us online, we're Tomorrow Daily on Facebook and Twitter. And I am at Ashley Esqueda on Twitter. Producer Logan is at Logan Moy. And our fantastic co-host, Jeff Kanata, is at Jeff Kanata with two N's and one T. Uh, please share the show. We're TomorrowDaily.com. It's that easy to give the gift of Tomorrow Daily this holiday season. Uh, and we will see you guys next time. We'll be back tomorrow, but not Thursday, with a brand new docket of weird, wonderful science facts. Being science fiction, blowing up in your face, getting all great. But until then, be good humans. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Oh. 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 Oh.